So, welcome to today's edition of uh, SESI Talks. SESI Talks is part of our project WEEP, a project uh, uh, supported uh, by the European Parliament. It's about also raising awareness, not only about the negative side of the EU, but also of the benefits, which can be uh, many. And uh, it is also about raising awareness very often people how could I say, when they think of the European Union, they believe uh, social standards have been lowered and also we are trying to show examples here in which we can state the opposite. Today we have uh, with us Petros uh, Fasoulas, Secretary General of the European Movement International. Petros, welcome. Thank you very much, Klaus. A pleasure to be here. Uh, grateful for the invitation. Petros, um, the EU is often referred to as lowering social standards. Can you spontaneously uh, give examples uh, which uh, could show otherwise. Yeah, I'd like first to recognize where this perception comes from. After the financial crisis uh, in 10, 12 years ago, when the sovereign debt crisis that followed, there were some really draconian measures put in place by national governments. Uh, and in many cases, I think the EU took the blame for that because those austerity measures resulted in the lowering of social protections in some member states, especially those that received financial assistance uh, bailouts, as they were called, from the EU institutions and the IMF. So there was a, a sense that this was the fault of uh, Europe, so to say, of the European Union. And, and, in, and we need to recognize that because a lot of people hurt, especially workers uh, hurt quite a lot from those measures. But at the same time, it's, it's good to recognize that uh, the previous European Commission uh, put in place a lot of initiatives and legislative proposals and eventually adopted measures to help alleviate that problem. Especially the European Pillar on Social Rights is a very important initiative of the European Union that is aimed at protecting the, the social uh, regulations that are there to safeguard uh, citizens and workers. Uh, and with, in the context of the European Pillar on Social Rights, there are several initiatives that the EU is undertaking to ensure that all those rights that EU citizens enjoy, that are enshrined in European law, are protected and strengthened. Um, Petros, uh, the, the reputation of the EU has ever since always seen ups and downs, but in particular this past year, I mean, uh, it started when you think of, uh, of uh, delivery of equipment, of masks, etc. This whole saga is in a very sluggish way. And yet uh, then very positive developments took place. What do you think? Um, um, where, which were the highlights according to you what happened to the last year and which were, I'd say, the not so good examples? And what according to you will be decisive for the future? I think the, the pandemic and uh, the health crisis was a stark reminder of how important it is to have the European Union. Because like you just said, the initial knee-jerk reaction of uh, member states was to deal with this on their own, in a fairly selfish way, you know, behind borders, uh, keeping uh, stockpiles of uh, material, uh, keeping people out. It was a, a human reaction, uh, but one that doesn't really belong in the EU that we have created. And, and that's, I think, where the first failure was. It was that immediate, almost instinctive uh, desire by member states to, you know, huddle and keep what's theirs. Once the EU was able to step in and coordinate the reaction of uh, member states, uh, insist on solidarity and put in place the measures necessary for that solidarity to manifest itself, it became obvious immediately how much better the response could be if we work together. So uh, in, in this particular case, uh, both in the initial stages, but also later when we moved to a more European response, uh, we were enabled to really appreciate once again how important it is to have this EU. Not because, not just because of the national concept of solidarity, but the practical measures that we were able to put in place fairly quickly thanks to the institutions and those channels of communication and cooperation that exist in the EU. So for me, that's the main takeaway, that 
he reminded us that by standing together and working together, we can overcome this enormous existential crisis. Uh, Petros, uh, on 9th of May, which is Europe Day, the, the conference on the future of Europe will also officially um, is be launched. Is this a particular moment for you as Secretary General of the European Movement International? Um, is a conference really needed? And because, uh, I mean, many people also make a comparison to the convention, uh, to the 2002-2003 convention. Where do you see an improvement now for this new conference in the overall architecture? As you know, the raison d'etre of the European movement is to enable citizens and stakeholders from all sides of society, all walks of life and across Europe to be involved in that European project we are all working towards. Um, so every opportunity we have to do that, we are keen to take. And I believe the Conference of the Future of Europe is indeed an opportunity to engage more people in the discussion about the direction we want to go. Uh, there is, of course, a potential, as ever, for something like this to become a very Brussels bubble thing, where the usual suspect gets really exercised, but nobody else notices. But I think it will be a pity to waste that opportunity. And it is upon all of us, uh, those here in Brussels, but also those on the ground, to ensure that people are aware of this and they will give them the opportunity to participate. Uh, the interesting innovation in this particular exercise is the establishment of Uh, citizens panels. Randomly selected citizens will be able to uh, work with each other to put forward proposals that then the, the plenary of the conference will consider and perhaps translate into uh, proposals for the EU institutions to adopt. Uh, and I think that in itself is a very significant turning point into the idea of more participatory democracy. We don't, of course, want to undermine the parliamentary democracy we have in place. The European Parliament especially is directly elected by people and it should be on the forefront of delivering for European citizens. But we have seen experiments of participatory democracy in several parts of the world, including here in Europe, in Ireland uh, previously, and even in France more recently. And they can function as an additional way of enabling citizens to channel their thoughts into the decision-making process, alongside what takes place at the national level with national parliaments and the European level with European parliaments. So I believe this innovation is a very interesting one. Uh, again, the EU is at the forefront of uh, Uh, of uh, innovation because it's the first time we see this multinational cross-border deliberative, deliberative democratic tools put in practice and I really look forward, I'm excited, I'm curious to see how the citizen panel's proposals will be carried into the discussions and then translated perhaps into actions. Yeah, we are planning also to have uh, exchanges with our, the members of our members and I look forward to these exchanges too because very often they're tough but they are straight to the point. And by the end of the day, very often you come to the conclusion that there is nothing better, at least in the situation where currently than a construct like the European Union. But it's fun to have these debates. Um, Petros, if you look at the future, which steps, initiatives, elements during, but also beyond the crisis will now be of fundamental importance for the EU um, to continue functioning, to, con to function better, um, to survive. Yeah. I think the purpose of the European Union is to provide common solutions to our, to our joint challenges. And to be able to identify what, which are the most important initiatives, we need to see what are the biggest challenges we face. And of course, the, the climate crisis is number one. Uh, this is what we need to put as a first priority, you know, saving our planet without wanting to sound too dramatic. And in that regard, the EU has uh, undertaken significant initiatives. It has been a leader in efforts to address the causes of climate change, but it has also been a leader in putting in place methods and procedures and instruments that will allow us to safeguard our environment. Uh, through the Green Deal, by enshrining into law, environmental legislation, other initiatives on biodiversity, on renewable energy, a variety of things. So this is one of the core priorities of the EU at the moment, and it's completely understandable because that's the major crisis we face. 
Other things that are really important have to do with the transformation of our societies and our economies. We have seen significant changes through the digital revolution that changed entirely our workplace, but our society at large. And I think that the initiatives that EU is undertaking to put forward uh, proposals and legislation to address this digital transformation are remarkably important because we are going through a revolution the way we did during the Industrial Revolution and, and the EU is the place that can help member states and citizens to respond to the challenges of the digital revolution and make the most of that revolution. And the, and the third thing I would say, I think it's a, it is a crisis on democracy that we face both in terms of part citizen participation, but also the institution of democracy is being challenged across the world uh, with different models of governance and also in Europe with uh, certain illiberal uh, politicians or political parties gaining power and undermining the very fabric of democracy, the rule of law, freedom of press, freedom of speech. I think that's a third area where the EU needs to work very, very hard and ensure that democracy is defended and the values and the rights that underpin the European ideal are not hijacked, undermined and destroyed. Petros, a final message to uh, CESI and its members? I think the, the role you play uh, is remarkably important because the, the European project isn't just um, an affair for nations. Uh, the European project is a, is a compromise between stakeholders from across society. And without workers, without the trade unions, uh, this project will not have equilibrium. You know, you are the ones closest to citizens. And the role you play for involving your members, translating their wishes and influencing the direction the EU takes is hugely important. And it's a true honor that you are part of the European movement family. And it's always a pleasure working with you to achieve our common goals. Petros, thank you very much. Take care of yourself and best regards to the European Movement International. Thank you very much to you too.